In one of our blogs, we discuss the importance and significance of template 1 and template 0. So what is the purpose of template 1? Whenever you create a database, it copies the structure and objects from template 1. So let's see with a demo. We'll start by connecting to template 1. Next, we'll do DX to list the extensions. The list of installed extensions is only this one. Now let's say we create a test database called Test1DB. As we discussed, it's going to copy everything from template 1. So when we connect to the newly created database, and do a DX, we see that the same extensions are copied over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an extension inside template 1 and create another new database and see if it propagates. Let's connect to template 1. And then, as we discussed in the blog, we're going to create this extension, PG Buffer Cache. This extension is created now inside template 1. And when we do a DX, you can see that the new extension is appearing in the template 1 now. So that's going to happen to any new database that we create hereafter. That new extension will propagate. Let's test that. We'll start out by creating another new database, this one called Test2DB. Now that we created a second database, whatever new extension we created should be here. Here we can see that PG Buffer Cache has propagated to the new database. So we've seen that anything you create in template 1 is going to appear in the newly created database. This is one important thing to remember. So if template 1 is useful in that case, how about template 0? We're going to take a look and see when template 0 is useful. Here we discussed a particular scenario where we tried to create a database with custom encoding. It did not allow us to create that, and it threw out an error. Then what we did is we went ahead and used template 0, and it was successful. Let's go ahead and take a look at that demo now. To start out, let's try to create a new database with the custom encoding. So we're going to create database test at sky using this encoding. Here we can see it's failed and is incompatible with the encoding of the template database. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to change the template database to use template 0 as our template, instead of template 1, and we can see it is successful. In this instance, we cannot use template 1. Rather, we have to specify the template as template 0 when we're using custom encoding like this, and create the database successfully. This is one scenario where template 0 is very useful. The other scenario is when you need to restore template 1. For example, if we go to drop template 1, it's saying I cannot drop a template database. So what we need to do is we need to remove it as a template and then drop it. Initially, when we try to drop the database template 1, it says you cannot drop it. And what we need to do is we need to update this one and set this flag to false. The template to false, where dat name equal to template 1. So once we update this setting, it'll allow us to remove template 1. Once template 1 is removed, when you do slash L, 
you won't see template 1, you only see template 0. Typically, we don't advise you remove this. But let's say there's a scenario where you don't have it and you want to restore it. You can restore it using a template 0. So here, we'll use create database template 1 template 0. Now we can restore template 1 using template 0. This is another scenario where template 0 comes to our rescue. So, we have seen what is the use of template 1 and template 0 in this video. But one other thing by default is if you try to connect to template 1, it will let you connect. But when you try to connect to template 0, by default, it will not allow you. This is one other difference to keep in mind. We covered in this video how to use template 1 and template 0. To get access to more job scenarios, please subscribe and enroll in CloudDB School.